So I declare and testify together with Jesus Christ that you must stop living the kind of life the world lives. That is hardly the way you have learned from Christ unless you fail to hear properly when you are, were taught what the truth is in Jesus. You must give up your old way of life. You must put aside your old self, which is being corrupted by following illusionary dreams and desires. Your mind must be renewed by a spiritual revolution so that you can put on a new self that has been created in God's likeness and in justice and holiness of the truth. The Word of God. Thank Thanks you, Jesus, God. Think of yourself as an ash 
turn on. And you are going out from the earth. And as you look back, you see a beautiful blue orb in the sky. And you say, as God probably did, this is beautiful. And everything I made is good. And that's what it says in the Bible. God said, everything I made was good. And then, as you get closer to the earth, coming back down, you see that the height of God's creation, people, human beings, are fighting with one another and disagreeing with one another and killing one another. And you say, how could this be? I made everything good. How can this be? And then you realize, as the people did, they wrote a story about the creation, that God made everything good, and he made mankind, and a man and a woman, and they introduced sin into the world, or corruption. And so, that is what God found. There was this sin and corruption when he came and looked at everything that was there. So time went on, and the people that God chose wound up in Egypt, and they were working there. And he said, I'm going to call my people out of Egypt to the promised land. And so he did. And they all complained. They said, we don't have anything to eat here. So God said, I'll give you this manna from heaven. It will be the staple of your life. As we call it bread, even today, the staple of our lives. It is a staple. We want bread. So God gave them the bread. And they were not happy. And time went on, and because they were not happy, God said, I will come myself, and I will take a human form, and it will be Jesus, and eventually I will show my love to the people, and I will tell them what they need to do to be happy. And so, as Jesus, a fully a man, and fully God, he came, God did, and he said to us, I am the living bread. Whoever comes to me will not hunger. Whoever comes to me will not thirst. I am the living bread come down from heaven. And the people said, well, how can we do this? You are a human being like us. What kind of bread is this? And Jesus at the last supper, gave us the bread and the wine and said, this is my body and this is my blood. And he said, in order that you will be fulfilling your life with bread and that you will feel satisfied, I gave you the little bread for your physical body, now I'm giving you the bread for your soul. And that's what he did because and even if we are hungry, if our souls are satisfied, we will be satisfied. We want the bread that fills us first, but we will not be happy if we don't have the bread from heaven. And they said, what is this bread? And Jesus said, it is the bread of love. And you must love one another. And when you love God and you love each other, you will be happy and you will be satisfied. I tried to show you that in the Ten Commandments, but you didn't listen to me. So I came here to show you and give my life for you and show you how much that God loves you and cares for you. And so he did. You know, Jesus died on the cross and because he was God, 
there was no way he could be dead just the same way when we die our souls live on and we live on and that's what happened with Jesus he lived on he came back and he showed us that God's power is stronger than death stronger than anything except love itself and that's what he wanted to show us how much God loves us now today we have heard that message and we must ask ourselves am I living the life that God wants me to live am I living the life of God's love am I loving each other am I forgiving each other am I trying to make life better for each other or not and so we have to ask ourselves ourselves that question and knowing that God is there every moment to help us but he created a beautiful place for us to live in let us try to make that living place a beautiful place once again and because that's what God wants us to do and the only way that we will do that is by loving one another as God has loved us in Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. I invite your comments I think that also includes loving this planet that we live on you know you, you hear every day about the more <coughs> shark attacks there's more this and that and the other and it's because we as, as human beings are destroying natural habitats of animals that have been here long before us and nature will win that war in the end, not us. Anybody else? Thank you, Mike. This feeling of entitlement. We. Uh, we can. We do. We, we, we. But you know, my, my parents used to say, you're right then, and the other person's right to begin. And we don't seem to think that way anymore. It's like, it's my right, it's my right, it's my right. Well, there's rights from the other side, too. And there has to be respect along with all that. It's, you know, you, you can love somebody or love each other, but there also has to be mutual respect of, of other people as well. Yeah, I think that's part of loving one another. Well, some people don't realize that. Um, they no, think they can no. love people, and they, you'll you'll hear somebody say, "I love X Y Z person," but you know they don't respect the person doesn't respect them enough to to um, honor them like they should. I I was thinking about um, the people in the crowd who went up to Jesus and said, "What sign will you give us?" And wasn't this after he had multiplied the loaves and fishes yeah. and that sign was just right. overlooked? Right. Yeah. Um, and I, it got me thinking about what do I not see of the goodness uh, that God has bestowed upon me, of the, the little daily miracles that happen in my life that I overlook and don't take in. And, and I want to be more mindful of that. You know, like I, re I recently told one of my friends who is generally a very negative person, I said, tomorrow morning when you wake up, think of three things that you're grateful for, even if it's saying, I'm glad I'm breathing this morning. Well, let us turn to the statement of faith so we may say this together. I promise to see what is good for us brothers everywhere, to be acting in justice and equality, and then living with the freedom and responsibility of the child of God. I have promised to work for the realization of God's vision of harmony and right relations among all people, to be acting in our own and property. My promise to see peace Precious planet. 
Oh 
Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the clock you dream. See His love for our When 
supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave him thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so the sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup, we thank you for counting us worthy to have in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, with Terry and Tom, our bishops, and all the clergy and laity. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with all the apostles and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so together we sing through him with him in him in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours almighty father forever and ever amen amen amen
John. that way, but we know that with faith you are rewarding us 
in giving us your own body and blood. We thank you for this gift and we ask that you will help us in this way to live the life of love that you have called us to and showed us in the life of Jesus Christ. Grant our prayer in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now comes the time for announcements. So I have a couple of, I'll just make quickly and then turn it over to Father Jim. And that is, I had the occasion last night to watch the movie Maleficent. It was wonderful and a very, could have a very Christian theme for us. So you might want to watch it. And also, I want to ask Larry or Brian to, or Jerry to see me after Mass for a moment, please. Okay, just to give you an update on dice and stuff. Um, you heard me mention in the prayers of the faithful about Sarah. Who's coming? Now, who's Sarah? <coughs> I don't know. Uh, Sarah is a deacon, ordained deacon in the Episcopal uh, Church in uh, Key West at St. Paul's. And she and uh, Bishop Tom, I gotta get used to saying Bishop Tom, uh, have been working together very closely. During his Episcopal ordination, she asked if she could become part of, the, of our diocese. And uh, naturally, she is going to be welcomed with open arms. So we will have a deacon in, Fort, in uh, Key West. And then, as I mentioned before, Eric Erickson, who is from Minnesota, and the UP, way up in the head. The UP has has completed the full application process, and just to give you an idea, he had to have five letters of recommendation. He had to have all of his uh, transcripts. Um, did a full background federal state background check on him. Had to take the MMPI whatever the two psychological testing. Uh, it's tough to come into our diocese. Everyone that I send it out to, I never hear back. <laughs> Eric, Eric's, the, Eric's the first one that has actually gone through everything. And we have a, we have a retired or, or, or a former uh, dean of the seminary who, is, who left Roman and became independent. He is the one that is doing the seminary work for us for free doing all the courses uh, online and whatnot. So Eric will be starting those. It'll be about a two to three year process before he's ordained the priest. But please keep him in, in the prayers. And now we, you know, when that's all done, we'll have a church in Minnesota to rule. Uh, you know, with, with the Betty White and St. Olaf, you know, <laughs> there. So, uh, so that's exciting <clears throat> that's happening. Uh, 